Hi folks, welcome to Greg's Workshop. I'm Greg and today we're going to be building an assembly table to go on top of this Husky adjustable workbench. Now hopefully you watched the, my last video where I built a cabinet to go underneath this workbench and put a T-track on the top. The T-track part is particularly entertaining. If you haven't seen it, I suggest you watch it. Link down below. Only thing that's really wrong with this is it's just not very big. It's 24 inches wide. This particular one is 62 inches long. There's not quite enough room to, to assemble, you know, a big cabinet or something. So I want to build a tabletop that is three feet wide, six feet long, that'll just sit on top of here and just stay put. That way I can adjust the height uh, if I have something smaller or, or lower it if I need have something bigger. So uh, let me show you what I got. So check this out. MDF, this is the higher density MDF according to the place where I bought it. Um, you can see it's darker than kind of the lighter tan colored MDF that you get at uh, most uh, hardware stores and big box stores. I got this from a place called Mr. Plywood, so they would probably know. Um, this is app apparently true MDF. That lighter colored tan stuff is uh, uh, lightweight MDF, according to them. Anyway, nice and thick, nice and uh, dense, a little heavy. Uh, I took this to a, a local guy that I uh, follow on Instagram that just set up his four by eight CNC table. Uh, he made it square, three feet by six feet, three quarter inch dog holes at four inch spacing. It's beautiful, I love it. Um, if you need something like this, find a local CNC shop, they're around. Um, I was fortunate enough that he followed me on Instagram. I followed him back and, uh, and here we are. And then uh, this is gonna be like a torsion box style table. So I have this piece of half inch birch. Also got this from Mr. Plywood. Uh, if you're in the Portland area and need plywood, Mr. Plywood's a good spot. Um, so half inch birch, this is what they call C2. So it has the C side, um, you know, the A, B, C, D grading uh, for plywood. So it's C on both sides, which is perfect for a shop project. And it's like half the price of regular Baltic birch. Um, it's actually not bad. I mean, there's, there's some, some spalting and there's some filler spots, but honestly, the C of birch is better than most A of fir plywood. So good enough. All right. First step is going to be to get this stuff milled down. So this piece of birch is going to be both the bottom of this assembly table as well as the, the, the I don't know, the web, the sides, the rails. Um, I think I've got just enough to do it. It's only going to be like four and a half, five inches thick altogether. Um, so I've got this lined up with the edges nice and square. I'm just going to trace along here. Then I'm going to use the track saw to cut this out just slightly larger so that it, when, I, when I get done with, uh, put the bottom on, I can run around with the router with a trim bit and get it nice and flush. So get this out of the way and uh, get to cutting. Here's a little track saw time lapse. Track saws, gotta love them. You need one. You know you need one. And after the track saw comes the table saw. There is nothing like having the right tool for the right job. Now that I have all my strips cut, I can lay out my pocket holes. I have the three long pieces clamped together here, make sure they're squared up on the end. And I'm just gonna make the marks right across the top I'm going to start in, oh, right about three inches in, I think. You can really do whatever you want. This is, you know, this is sort of sort of winging it. And I think every nine inches after that. I haven't done the math to, to see if that'll come out even or not with a, a middle piece, but uh, who knows? And lastly, the pocket hole time lapse. Pocket hole jigs, they're just, they're so wonderful. They're so great for shop furniture. I have my side pieces cut and drilled. Now it's time to scribe for the end pieces. So I have two thicknesses stacked up here, clamped together, perfectly flush with the edge, clamped down to the table. I'm gonna take one of these uh, end bits here, lay it on there, make sure everything is nice and flush and square. And then scribe a line underneath to cut to. Do that for a second piece as well. I actually prefer scribing to measuring in something like this just because the measurements can be off just slightly. 
This way I know I've got it flush. I know I've got it flush to here and flush to here. These are gonna be on each side. What I'm gonna do is get these cut. I'm gonna assemble the outer ring and then we'll scribe everything else in the middle. So we'll, we'll uh, lay the center uh, support, long support down, get it scribed and cut, get it installed uh, on the ends. And then uh, we'll figure out what the spacing or what the uh, length rather for the intermediate frames are. Uh, so we'll get to cutting and uh, get it assembled. Now for the center support, what I've done, put some glue on here. We'll get that in its spot on that end, in its spot on this end. And then to get it centered and squared, I cut these two cross pieces. If I pull that in tight, gets it properly spaced this way, gets it properly squared this way. You can drive a screw in, move on down the line. Got all my cross members in. You can't really see it from this side, but uh, you can see it over here a little bit. I've got pocket holes, uh, two down, up, so to speak, into the top. Uh, I've got the ends uh, stapled in and glued. Uh, on this side, these are stapled um, because they're, they butt up there. I had to use pocket holes there. Uh, there's a row of holes right in the middle, right here, so I couldn't put these two pieces in line, so I just offset them two inches either side. So uh, it's... Uh, quite a bit more rigid now. It still has a little bit of, little bit of twist to it if I pick it up. So uh, next step, put that layer of half-inch plywood on. The bottom goes on with lots of glue, and lots of staples. You can see I'm, here I'm marking out where the staples will go, and then I mark out where all the cross pieces are so that I can make sure to get staples into the actual wood, into the cross members, and not just into free space. It's so got the basic structure done. Two more things to do, well, more than two. I need to trim the edges and put edge banding on. But before I flip it over, uh, two more things to do. I need to measure and mark for the where the tabletop is gonna go. So this is the bottom, it's gonna flip over, sit on top of that table. I need to mark that out and then just put some little strips of wood to kind of hold it in place so that it, it'll sit on top of the table. It won't, won't you know, rock side to side, or slide rather. Um, the other thing I need to do, because I have those dog holes, if I drop fastenings down uh, on accident, I wanna be able to get them. So I need to cut, figure out spaces to cut out in here so that I can get at those uh, those fastenings uh, if, well, let's be honest, when they fall. Uh, so we'll get the table laid out first and then we'll use that to kind of guide where the cutouts go. I marked everything out off camera and I'm using this hole saw to drill out all the corners. Then I'll use a jigsaw to cut out the larger pieces. Then we'll round off the edges to avoid splinters. So I've got my uh, cutouts done in the middle for compartments. Out on the corners here, this is where the corner of the table is going to be. So I didn't want to, you know, cut out right here and have it not supported. So I just drilled some holes. If screws fall through, hopefully they'll fall out. If not, I can just sort of snake a, a magnet or something in there. It'll be fine. Or they'll just rattle around. It doesn't really matter. So I've got the outside drawn here. Got these strips of plywood cut. Basically gonna have one at each end, and then one's here and there at those corners as well. Uh, we'll get those tacked down with just some staples and uh, see if it fits.
boy, it just fits. It's perfect. Nice and stable, nice and flat, nice and square. Exactly what I wanted. All right, uh, so next step, uh, only a couple things left to do here. One, I need to get a finish on the top to protect the MDF. I'm gonna be using clear shellac. Uh, need to get it wiped off, light sanding, wiped off again, another coat of shellac, so on, so forth, rotate over and over and over and over again. Also, I'm gonna put a little bit of maple, some quarter inch thick pieces around the edge here, just to protect the, the edge of the MDF. Um, I've got some spots where my pocket screws kind of started to come through. The MDF, uh, that's a little bit of a risk that you run, I think, uh, using pocket screws into the end of MDF, but uh, that's, you know, it's neither here nor there. That's what happens. So uh, we'll get it sanded, get some lacquer put on, and uh, in a day or two, probably, get the maple put on. All right, folks, we're in the home stretch. Got my uh, finish applied, four coats of shellac, 220 sandy between each one. After the final coat, I used this uh, 320 grit ultra fine um, sandpaper pad, and it's kind of a scotch bright looking thing. Anyway, made it nice and smooth. Then I put a coat of wax on it. Uh, good finish, I like this. The last thing to do is to put the trim on. I'm gonna be using PVC trim because uh, I want it to be thin uh, for reasons that'll be apparent here in a couple of minutes. Uh, so quarter inch thick, uh, still really stable, not going to break, not going to snap. I want it to go along the edge here, mostly to protect the MDF. Um, another good reason to use PVC is that it's not going to splinter. I'm not going to catch my hand on, on uh, any little splinters and, you know, and have to deal with that. Now in preparation for the trim, I actually rabbited around the edge. You can see right here, despite my best efforts uh, of getting this you know, perfectly flush, it didn't work. Um, there's lots of spots where it's wavy and the screws moved it and all that. So there's a real shallow rabbit uh, in various places all the way around the edge of this. I used the MDF as a guide since that was CNC. That's the, you know, that's our, our, uh, our guiding light, so to speak. That's the basis from which we're starting. Uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna glue this, but I am gonna uh, nail it with some brads. It's going to be hanging over just slightly over the edges. I'll route that flush, then I'll put the end pieces on. I'm going to glue it. Since it's PVC, we can use just regular like plumber's PVC cement. Uh, and then route off the edge of that, round over the top, and uh, we should be good to go. When building shop furniture, equally as important as sizing it properly to your workspace is to size it properly to your storage location. You need to have a place to put these things. The place to put this table is going to be right here, behind the rolling tool bench. I've measured and I should just barely be able to clear this. You can see there's a curb running around where most foundations are six inches thick. You have a two by four wall. You have a couple inches on the inside. I chiseled all the high spots down. I should just be able to barely clear this. If I can't, I'll just move these boxes up. It's not a huge deal. It just, you know, it'll take an extra half an hour or whatever. So let's get it in place and see how it fits. Take two. And this is what I came up with for securing it to the wall. Put in a hanger bolt. It's one of these. So it's a lag on one end, machine screws on the other. In this case, 5 16ths. 
put it into the wall into a stud just got a simple knob there it doesn't really take much load it's just keeping it from from falling out uh, so that should work just fine i just need to be careful to not ding up this particular dog hole when i'm putting it back every time And there's the completed project. Went from a bench that was against the wall, went into the corner, was usable but not super usable, to now a rolling bench, adjustable height, two different sizes, and uh, I can move it up and down as I need to. Good storage underneath. I'm gonna call this whole project a success. Folks, if you enjoyed that video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell to get notified of new videos every other Saturday, leave a comment or question down below, and I'll see you next time on Greg's workshop.